Hello and welcome to the Union Pacific Railroad Geneva Subdivision. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout and also your host for this video. This is an update video featuring roads going in in Rochelle. And this is a road I want to add going across the tracks there. Uh, it's going to be a fork in the road and the road needs to go across. And so I'm going to be working on that uh, before I can do that though. I uh, need to get these trains out of the way. We have quite a log jam here of, of trains. Uh, looks like a manifest train and a loaded coal train and heading eastbound and then a westbound double stack train and uh, we need to clear these out so uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, set the crossover and we'll have the manifest train be the first one to be able to depart in this case eastbound This particular manifest train is led by a Scale Trains Tier 4 GE unit. I have four of these. I think they're a little bit too new for my layout. I'm trying to get the layout kind of set from 2008 through 2014. I think they came out at 2015. So I may be looking to sell those and then pick up maybe some older ones. They are very, very nice models. Let's see if we have a green. Yes, we do, which was quickly knocked down to red. And then we'll go ahead and continue across the crossing. And as you can see it going through the crossover, I would want to, would want to mention that uh, all the mainline track has uh, number 10 turnouts. And then the secondary track has number 8 turnouts, and that's the smallest uh, turnouts on the layout. 10 on the mainline, 8 on the secondary tracks. All right, so the manifest train is clear of the control point here in Rochelle. This is milepost 78. Looks like uh, we have the signal and the crossing has, the crossover has been set to straight. So the double stack, double stack train will head out. This is a through Double stack train will not be stopping at Global 3. I'm using the, the drone method for this particular one. And you might be thinking that I've practiced quite a bit and I'm getting better at holding the camera. Uh, but in fact, I got, I uh, received a uh, iSteady Mobile Plus, which is a gimbal to hold the smartphone. And it still is a little shaky, but a big improvement over just holding it by hand. I need to practice with the gimbal a little bit more. Uh, you can actually uh, zoom in, zoom out with the handheld gimbal and also uh, use a joystick to kind of move it around. Uh, I pretty much am just moving it uh, by moving the gimbal not by using the joystick. And as you can see the double stack train is not stopping in Rochelle at Global 3 and instead it's going through. And then finally the lowest priority train 
the coal train is now heading eastbound. You can see uh, there's four cars there together in the interchange track that need to be picked up. The operations video coming up this Sunday will feature those cars uh, being picked up as well as cars being dropped off. So you can look forward to that on Sunday. And the coal train, I believe, has a green light here. And it does. And so it now we'll continue uh, eastbound towards uh, Chicago. And here you can see uh, some movement with the gimbal. A little smoother. Actually, it's a lot smoother, but still not 100% smooth. All right, with all the trains uh, clear, we now can begin work on the crossing. The first thing I did is I took a strip of styrene. I measured it the appropriate width. This is not the one I used, but I set it down on the tracks and then I used my uh, roller there. It's a wallpaper roller to make an impression on the styrene. And then I cut out the styrene along the impressions and then use that to put the styrene in the appropriate places. Now it would be nice if I could tell you it you know, I cut it out and then just set it right down and it fit perfectly, but that's not the case. There was, of course, a lot of extra trimming that needed to be done, uh, especially of the styrene that goes between the tracks that had to be cut down quite a bit to clear the flanges. And right, then I also set the mold out here for uh, the uh, plaster. Now I'm going to be using some BLMA uh modern crossing gray crossings uh, the one on my right hand there was uh, sent to me by blma way back when he first came out with these um, these are the rubber crossings uh, the two that he sent me were came pre-painted but i don't think he ever actually came out with um, pre-painted ones before we get back to the crossing i also picked up a number of these uh, river point station uh, pickup trucks. Uh, again, these are made by River Point Station. I had never heard of them before, but I guess they've been making N uh, HO scale vehicles. This is, I think, their first N scale vehicles. Um, not too thrilled with the packaging. I think Atlas has their pickup trucks in a jewel case. Um, these are just packed in packaging that you're going to have to throw away unless you're better at taking them out than I am. So this is an F-350 Ford pickup truck. And it's a 1992 version. And just looking at it, uh, the detail looks uh, very, very nice. Good painting. I received one with police which I plan on removing the police from that. Hopefully do some alcohol or something to remove the police. And I also received one for the public works. I'll leave that as a public works. And then they also make a utility truck. This is still the Ford 350 as a utility truck, which I think is a really nice addition. Again, good detail nicely painted and right, just for comparison's sake here's the atlas ford 150 and first of all you can see the 150 is definitely smaller than the 350 um, and i think the i couldn't find on the atlas site what year the f-150 is but i think it's 
newer than 1992. But quality wise and, de and detail wise, they're both pretty comparable. And I think both very excellent models. Can, can take a look at the size difference. So both of them are nice models. So I have two uh, black ones with police as just the pickups. And then I have uh, two of the public works trucks. One pickup truck, the other one the utility truck. All right, we'll go ahead and set that aside. And back to the crossing. Ooh, things disappeared. So the first thing I had to do, of course, is uh, glue the this styrene down once I had it all uh, exactly uh, trimmed and cut to the exact right size and then once I had it all glued down need to test the clearances so I have a locomotive here ready to go across each one make sure that it clears the flanges and goes over smoothly and without any dead spots. And on all three of these, on all three tracks, the locomotive went through smoothly. I have to admit though, after uh, videotaping this, I did go through all three uh, again, but much slower. And then I did identify some, some dead spots and some binding, so I went ahead and uh, trimmed it a little bit more so that it would clear. Here's another look at the pickup trucks from River Point Station. These retail for $33 uh, for a two pack. I received them from modeltrainstuff.com for uh, $25. You can get the Ford F-150s on eBay for like $18. Uh, so these are a little bit more expensive, but I already have a ton of the Ford, of the Atlas F-150s. So definitely was good to pick up two packs of these trucks. All right, the plaster has been put down and it dried overnight. This morning I sanded it and painted it and this is as far as I've gotten to this point, October 17th, 2019. As you can see, I need to add some gravel on the sides of the roads as it crosses the tracks. Uh, not only where it crosses the tracks, but along the sides of all the, the roads that I've been doing. Here you can see the entire stretch of roads that I've done in the last uh, week or two. Still need to put in lines as well as other details. All right, here we'll test run a couple of trains over the new crossing, make sure everything goes across smoothly. Make sure that you uh, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. If you want to see all the different steps that I took in building this road, they have all been posted, uh, the step-by-step -step on Instagram. So you'll definitely want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. The username for both is UPRRGenSub. Still left to do on the roads is to Put gravel along the sides of the roads, especially on the crossing. We'll also need to do some striping of the roads as well as weathering. So stay tuned for that. I also will be doing, of course, roads on the other side of the, of the tracks. Uh, those will all be featured in upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned for the operations video this weekend. Have a great day. Take care.